of the political strength of a president of the United States, I would have to say would be the woman beside him, his wife. A big part. <laughs> a big part. We could say. <laughs> That's been the case from Martha Washington to Michelle Obama. All the wives of men elected to the presidency are recognized in a place where Leon Bibb takes us today in his Continuing My Ohio series. It is a special place, especially during this political season. It is here in Northeast Ohio. So come with me to Canton and we will visit the First Lady's National Historic Site, where all the nation's First Ladies are honored. While we were there, we will go into a long ago home of a president and look into the safe where he kept his money. The wives of presidents and how they lived with their husbands in the White House usually intrigue us. Wives close to the seat of American power. In this Canton, Ohio building, emphasis is not so much on presidents, but on their wives. Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome to the National First Ladies Historic Site. So this is the place where all the First Ladies have their gowns. It is. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and more. Okay. Michelle Gullion is an archivist at the First Ladies National Historic Site, owned by the National Parks Service, but operated locally. In it, American presidencies are viewed mainly through the focus of the wives who shared in the White House living. They know him. Uh, what makes him tick behind the scenes and what makes him tick in front of the scenes. Michelle Obama has not yet visited, but has plans. Since it opened in 1998, Rosalind Carter, Laura Bush, and Hillary Clinton have come here. She spoke on a stage out in the middle of the street and there were about a thousand people here. On display are gowns and items from First Ladies. All First Ladies are listed here, but highlighted are several who were from Ohio, including Lucretia Garfield, wife of James A. Garfield, who was assassinated in 1881. Tour guide Mimi Bogart dresses as Mrs. Garfield dressed, not portraying her, but copying the style of the day. It's unfortunate that her brief time in the White House um, didn't leave much of a mark on the memory of Americans. Because her husband was assassinated. Yes, very sadly. Part of the site is the actual home of another Ohio president who was assassinated in 1901, William McKinley. There are guided tours through the house in Canton. McKinley thought about running for president in 1897 right here. Some of wife Ida Saxton McKinley's dresses are here. I even checked out the safe. This house in the heart of Canton was owned by the family of Ida Saxton McKinley, wife of the man who would later become president. William McKinley himself lived a very modest life until he met up with Ida, who owned all of this. Old William, well, he married up. She had some money too, right? Oh yes, she really did. You think he noticed that? I'm sure he did. He couldn't have helped but notice that. <laughs> The First Lady's site is really a window through which can be tracked American women's progress. Many First Ladies championed equal rights. Example, Lucretia Garfield, mourning the tragic death of her husband, noted the physicians who tended him in his final hours. And one of them was a woman, and she was paid less than the men. And she said, you know, this is not my place to say, but the woman did the work, and so she should be paid at equal level. The title First Lady was not there for the nation's first hundred years. Titles were tried and discarded because they didn't fit right. Among them, Lady as in Lady Washington, Mrs. President and Mrs. Presidentress. One day a news reporter called the wife of Ohio's Rutherford B. Hayes First Lady of the Land. That title stuck. President's wives have held it ever since. Learn about them all in Canton, in my Ohio. I'm Leon Bibb.